Hello guys, this is Good Lake, and we're back to the series where I'm trying to write an application that will replace and improve the suit of Subbox. Maybe. Eventually. This is going a lot slower than I thought, and it's mostly due to unforeseen circumstances. So, while I did say that it would be crazy if we didn't get something done by the new year, I've changed my mind. But, but. Do not worry, as soon as the new year ends, we'll have January. And in January, I happen to have some vacation, so hopefully I won't get sick and I'll be able to record during that. So, what's what's up for today? I have no idea. I'm going to start the timer, and we're just going to go. So, uh, we have... Last time we wrapped up uh, the require, but uh, I see that I've done something, so let's go ahead and see what I've done. What atrocities have I committed? Where is the version control tab? There's supposed to be one, but there isn't one, and this upsets me very well. I don't need it. I'm a professional. All right. Sure, Diff. Oh, I've refactored out this very, well, similar line of code because as it turns out the only difference here was the input and uh everything else was basically the same this got refactored out i don't know why i didn't record this but i think i just i wasn't sure something would work so yeah i thought fuck it i'll, I'll show it in in the start of the next video but throwing consumer already exists Include non-project files. In fact, there's three of them. But one of them at least probably is in build. There, there you go. We have uh, this. So this is a throwing consumer. It's exactly the same thing as what we've written, I think. Pretty much. So why not just use this? It's on GUnit Juniper API and... Uh, this is pretty much for testing. I cannot imagine using this outside of testing. And if we do require it in the real code, then we can always re-add it, you know, or look for another instance. Anyway, before we delete it, oh, well, that's easy. You just delete this and then we import this. Nothing changed. Nothing changed, mind you. We can now definitely delete it. CNC. All the tests still run. Excellent. There's something disabled. We'll look into that soon. I've noticed that since I updated the uh, version of IntelliJ IDEA, it has a new icon for tests that are disabled. That's cool. That's a good change. It's much different than before and much easier to see. Let's go straight to to-do. Ooh, assertion for no search results. Mm, mm. Right, so uh, with this, I suppose we can get started and uh, get back into what we were doing previously as the YouTube search and it producing no results. So previously we had a test here. Let me show you what it was. I, well, I think we can just copy this. Uh, uh, let's call this... Definitely produces no results and is not all is empty right so this test essentially is very similar to what we had written before except i did have a very trivial search query but now i realized you know what was missing here it's missing the fact that okay maybe there are literally no results and then the search results would be not null, and specifically it would be empty, which would prompt us to write this line of code. And uh, this should pass. Good. Definitely ran, everything's fine. I suppose we can try and get back into this. Ah yes, before we continue down the YouTube channel, then we need to do the last to do which is to use item instead. What do I mean by that? Okay, so currently our YouTube channel is, well, an implementation like this. Uh, it even still has this, which we could refactor, but I'm not going to do it right now, because I think uh, there's an even better thing that we can do, and that is 
instead of having these values sitting here, what we could do is have something else entirely. Uh, if you look at the YouTube API spike, search results, why is spike not part of source code? Cradle, what are you doing? Failed to notify progress listen. What? It just works the second time. Oh my god, Cradle. But it still hasn't configured uh, this is source root, which should not be happening. Because as you can see, we have spike compile, which extends from compile, and we have these source sets. So. What are you doing? Do I have to do this? Are you forcing my hand? Riddle V idea? Is, is this the problem? No, it actually is that dumb. What the fuck happened? Okay, well apparently unless I choose this, it doesn't understand that this, this is a source directory anymore. Uh, whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go back to this search result. So, this is part of JSON, and I believe if we do get items, we will find jack shit, because that's not the API. Okay, let me open up here. So, this is the full response, and items are, uh, well, each one specific search response outside of uh, the metadata. Uh, this basically is the metadata of the request. It gives you things like what kind of request this was, the, the whatever the hell that is, a uh, token for the next page, which allows you to keep getting next to next to next page if you want to, and uh, all kinds of other info. So if you have the item, you can then navigate through this item and find all the things that you want including title, ID, and whatever. So we don't need to explicitly create an object that holds those values. Instead, we could just, uh, well, ah, I see, this was already an item, that's why. They're called search results here. So what we can actually have here, instead of all that stuff we did before, is a... A search result which will horribly break everything because uh, well these tests are no longer valid now are they <laughs> but we can we can still make this tests uh, work seems a bit backward but whatever let's just create a search result uh, here And, uh, wow, that is not what I wanted. Does this, now that I think about it, search result and search result is the same thing. We have overlap. No! Damn you, you do API naming scheme. Why couldn't have you just called it item? You're ruining everything for everyone. Well, well, what what do we do? We need to rename this interface, clearly. For sake of simplicity, let's now just call it result. It doesn't matter. Now we can use the search result. No problem. That is definitely not the same search result as this one. We need to just copy it. That's the only way. The only way there we go and in the tests uh, we can just do this and then do this and then do this and then voila then we need to actually populate it with the right stuff so what do we want to set and where are we going to look for our data so this is a video id yes because this is a search result so kind of a search result can have all kinds of different ids so if the id is a channel id that'll be fine but if it isn't 
we're gonna get fucked because <laughs> we do need this channel id at the same time our result is kind of very generic at the moment so maybe getting this id isn't that bad of an idea so let's go ahead and do that let's um use this id which will be in that we have the set id and set a new resource id Ugh. which we will also set channel id which apparently is an entirely separate ah yes of course you also determine what it is by the name of the property now we need to set the name somehow and name is well we can also set this i suppose and that would be the title in the snippet okay in the snippet we can set channel id to channel id and snippet set title to channel name well that's strange it was also channel title that's the same thing set it as well because this is pretty much what we will expect to see. Though some of these are obviously redundant. I think it's fair to say that looking at this ID doesn't make much sense because it's more convoluted. So we should just look into that and we should look into the specifically channel title instead. So we will basically be examining the snippet specifically because we know that it has to be filled and that will be much simpler for everyone involved now these will fail that is amazing you are amazing you are making me go crazy right so right now this this does no longer happen and of course uh, the one thing that we could do is uh, not have a search result but still use the old uh, ways but uh why 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 do that uh, to make this work uh, we all we have to do is make sure that we check for now that these values are not blank so all we have to do is do after setting uh let's say acquire not blank search result get uh snippet get uh, channel ID titled uh, channel ID and uh, get channel title titled channel title I think that will make them pass no not quite ah that's because we use the idea of channel name but i do believe channel title makes more sense we've been also this is also channel title so let's actually change this to be channel title channel title why not that makes a bit more sense as far as i'm concerned all right, so we're back into working shape. Took a while, but we're there. So now we are actually, we're doing quite a bit. So you could almost say that there's no point in holding on to the search result. Instead, we could just extract the values, which makes sense. It is, after all, technically a mutable object. We could definitely avoid the mess by doing that. So let's actually do that. With this, I will add the constructor parameters. Uh, actually, not like this. I don't think we can do it like that. Instead, I will do like uh, this. Right. And this will be our private constructor for which we will pass string ID and string title. Let's flip them up because I like the ID to be first. And now we just do require not blank. Now what does this give us is that we can just say this. Get this. And get this. Very nice. Right, everything still passes. The problem that we will arrive at is if we continue to write tests for the, this YouTube channel. So let's say we do 
no search result, which will uh, produce for us the following conundrum, if I may. Uh, we will do new YouTube channel with no. Yes, okay, correct. The test is fine, but as you will see, this will give us a null pointer exception for one and definitely won't give us anything. This happens because we are using the search result, but we can't, well, to pass it through parts of it into the object. Whether this is better or the opposite is better. And I think it really comes down to how many things of, of this we save. If we need all the things inside of it, then uh, obviously this is just a waste of time. But on the flip side, also there are multiple, there's all kinds of things here inside the search result that we probably don't actually need, even if we look here. We don't need, do we need thumbnails? We'll probably need thumbnails at some point. It's a fair argument to say that we'll need some and um, probably even information like when it's published. So I think it's fair to say that actually we should uh, keep the search result. The other option that you could take here is make this static. I mean, something like this. Uh, if you do this, then obviously you didn't have to return new YouTube channel. Everything remains the same except you pass through. Uh, the reason you need to do this, because uh, in constructors, unfortunately, the first call must be to this. You can, for example, start doing some shit here. As you can see, it'll say, what the hell are you doing? So constructors, usually, because of this extreme restriction, shouldn't be more complicated than this and maybe a few more assertions if you really need to make sure that the values that come into the constructor are accurate everything else should be uh, done by static factory methods as they are called but ultimately because i've decided we want to actually keep the search result in our object instead of keeping these values uh that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to do which means now we can do just the really simple require not null search result titled search look i'll just copy paste it it's faster that way these assertions should still remain however these assertions should uh, remain true however so we should after we've done setting the value we should assert response populated related we're gonna add a for ourselves a bit because but uh, it's mostly because i can and really instead of id and title we just need once again to do the good old search get snippet get channel id and get channel title right so this is no longer necessary and now test should pass uh let's clean up these tests actually cuz for example i believe we we've we've got a utility function for this somewhere out there in this massive now source tree uh, actually, in asserts, asserts, assert invalid blank, right? So we can do assert invalid blank. Ooh, this this is gonna be interesting, cause what we wanna do is set one of these values always blank, which uh, means that we really should uh, investigate the idea of. Uh, setting these uh, in a method so this will return us a search result and uh, we can just say populate search 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 result right so here what we want to do is actually have the input name which will be error type and the consumer will be input 
uh, populate search result. And now, unfortunately, we don't know which one we want. So we're actually going to go ahead and move that out here instead. Because here we can actually control it. First of all, I want to flip these. There we go. Channel ID, channel title. Very nice. So now we, we want channel ID. I want channel ID to be up top. And then we can do input any. What does this do? It will populate the search result with the input from our assertion, which will be all kind of nulls, and any channel title, which will simulate what was done here under this method. Then we can do exactly the same here, and I'll just copy, but instead of doing input into the first variable, we do it into the second one. Right, and then this is no longer necessary, and this is also combinable, and we can say no blank contents search result contents. Brilliant. This doesn't actually have to return it. Oh, well, no. This won't be enough. It has to then produce a YouTube channel with the search result. There we go. Now, now it's complete. So a bit of a convoluted uh, way to do this, but uh, we've got it. And uh, everything passes, as you can see. And similarly for this, we can do as an assert valid null search result. And in this case, we just need to do YouTube channel new. It's a little bit messy, but uh, I guess it works. Still better than massive assertions. And wow, that simplified the test a lot. Later, we might even be able to combine these. May probably not. We're not going to do that, probably. Uh, okay. Right, I like to put methods below. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so time is up for today. Uh, we managed to actually actually completed this. We we haven't fully completed this particular part. I'm going to actually write this down as we're wrapping up this episode that I want to finish YouTube channel. And uh the only reason I don't put it in to do is because I'm stupid. I I try to come up with a good reason, but really there isn't one. So uh there you go. Uh it's it's nice. It's clean. I think at least. And uh, we shall continue next time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.